So a couple of weeks ago, during our text class at the Identity School of Acting, we had the absolute privilege of a surprise visit from an Identity alum, star of Black Panther and Black Mirror, Letitia Wright. The very bottom to the top now, um, just to... Just, I just wanted to come to say hello because this place has really changed my life. It really taught me everything I needed to know. Uh, she took some time out of her very busy schedule uh, promoting Black Panther to stop by Identity School of Acting and just give us and the rest of the students there a few words of encouragement, really. In the space of about 10 minutes, she went from the bottom of the building, studio by studio, to the very top. She went into every single studio, she was high-fiving the actors in the corridor, and really just wanted to express her optimism and uh, love for IDSA. In those short conversations she had with us, um, she kind of expressed really what I think were five key points. She clearly had a lot that she wanted to say, but I managed to kind of boil it down to these five key takeaways that I kind of want to break down uh, in this video for you. And I just want to encourage you, because sometimes you see someone in a trailer, or on TV, or in a movie, and you're just like, damn, like, they look so far ahead. It's not, I'm right here. The success that we seek is closer than we think. And now having six plus years experience as a professional in this industry, I can definitely relate. Year by year, the number of so-called uh, famous people that I know seems to double. Um, the beauty of it, of course, being that when I met them, they weren't famous, which kind of makes it all the sweeter. I, I know them as, as real people. And that's really all that famous people are. They're real people with, with real experiences. Different experiences, but real experiences. And I think that's kind of what Letitia Wright was trying to say when she said, sometimes you, you see someone in a trailer or on TV and you think, wow, they're so far away. And as she says, you know, she was right in that room with us. These famous young actors are the ones that seem to have the success that many of us seek but from a young age, they're considered the lucky ones. Though I don't really kind of believe too much in luck as it applies to careers. Though, you know, I, I have plenty of stories from my friends' rise, rises to fame that um, really do make it clear that there is an element of that. But, you know, don't be fooled. The luck that kind of graces these young careers is only possible because of the the hard work and the passion that kind of gets put in place and, and executed upon before the luck can appear. So um, just wanted to come to just say to keep doing what you're doing, keep coming to learn for the craft. Keep learning. It always disappoints me to hear actors who have completed their three years of formal training or worse are still in their three years of formal training implying or even outright saying that they've learned everything that they feel they can learn it completely baffles me why here in the uk going to one-off workshops is considered the thing that the amateurs do that once you've completed your three years of formal training that you shouldn't need one-off workshops whereas in the US it seems to be completely the other way around as it should be to them an actor who regularly goes to workshops is one who's dedicated to their craft I've decided to go back to drama school for a multitude of reasons chief among them being that to me Going to regular classes, regular acting classes, sharpens my skills. It, it sharpens the proverbial saw. To me, an actor going back to class and going to learn regularly is just like an athlete going to the gym. You need to go to stay in peak condition. Stay, stay together, um, support one another, love one another. Your support network is super important. I just 
could not stress the importance of this enough. It's a lonely industry out there in showbiz and I know all too well how difficult it can be when you don't have a strong support network around you. When I completed my initial training in Northampton over six years ago, I moved straight to London and most of my colleagues from Northampton didn't. And the few that did decided they no longer wanted to continue their journeys as actors. So as soon as I arrived in London, my professional network was limited. You know, thankfully, when I moved to London, I moved to London with uh, several actors that I knew from back home in Birmingham. They were all, all four of us, we were kind of at the same point in our journey, really, more or less. And honestly, had it not been for them, I don't know how I would have coped. We were more than content in that flat. They essentially became my family for three years. But eventually, the time came for us to part ways. We still friends, we still talk, but you know, our lives were going in different directions. And when that time came, the panic just set in. I, we all had been so content in each other's company and the support that we were giving each other in our careers that we hadn't felt the need to branch out with our networks, which, you know, in hindsight seems completely foolish. And my network had just not grown at all in three years. So the panic set in and then I spent the next three years trying to catch up and I was going from, from point zero really, and I've kind of been trying to play catch up ever since. You know, ultimately, those actors that I've seen move into very successful careers have been those that work hard, they have a passion for what they're doing, and they have an exceptionally strong, not just support network, but professional network. You know, training with other actors develops a very unique, I want to say bond, a very unique bond that I, I just really don't think we should take for granted. Do it for the right reasons, do it to tell stories because this is what we do, this is the thing that God gave us to do. Some people can be doctors and lawyers, but we tell stories. In an industry that really does test us emotionally and, you know, financially as well, like, it can be really easy to forget why we do what we do. You know, for many of us, we fell in love with storytelling from a very young age, and it was something we never really grew out of, this, this idea of just playing pretend. You know, we, we fell in love with telling great stories from someone else's perspective. And because we never grew out of it, we decided that was something that we, you know, wanted to pursue as a career. But then, you know, that if you think about it, that's a really, really audacious goal. A really big ask of the universe, if you will. The ask of, of life. To be able to pay your bills by essentially playing pretend, albeit in a much more skillful, sophisticated way. But that's essentially what we're asking to do. But of course, a society like ours is not built around being able to live from such an audacious goal. And so what happens is adult life kicks in. We have more responsibilities. We then realize that we have to pay these bills, we have to eat, and, and just the cost of living puts pressure on us. And so then the myth of the overnight success and fame and fortune, the idea of fame and fortune, really just starts to corrupt this essentially really innocent love of storytelling. You know, in my six plus years, you know, 10 if you count my training of, you know, being a professional actor, I've seen so many actors just come and go and ultimately the ones that that retire early if you will do so for some very a very small amount of reasons 
number one, you know, it was just too much hard work for them, and the myth of the overnight success had convinced them just fundamentally that you could have a successful career starring in leading roles on TV and even in Hollywood blockbusters with just five years of hard work. And the fact of the matter is, for the most part, those sorts of careers are built over decades. Number two, they'd forgotten why they fell in love with storytelling and, and then they looked around at all their peers, their friends, their family who were working jobs that they absolutely hated just so they could buy a house or a flash car and then they looked around, They before the, they even hit 30 they were looking around at all their friends buying all this stuff and they were going well shit I don't have any of that and so they thought that their career was a failure already and they just threw in the towel. And number three, they just got beaten down by the industry and they just completely lost morale. They were stuck on this career ladder that, that just was not moving quickly enough for them. And rather than just build up this great body of work, telling great stories about great characters written by great writers, they got more concerned about their big break that just wasn't coming. Or number four, they got seduced by this idea of stuff and they bought into this idea or this myth that if you're an actor that hasn't made it yet, you're an artist and so you have to be a starving artist and you have to be poor by definition. And so the only way that you can gain material wealth is to get a normal J-O-B, a job that you hate, to buy stuff that you don't really need to impress people you don't even like. Now what I've just said could be interpreted as snarky or judgy, but it's not. Let me be absolutely clear. I have loads of friends that have made the decision to retire from acting and I frequently tell them how proud I am of them for making that decision and finding out that that's not really the path for them. I don't disrespect them, I don't consider them failures, I don't consider them idiots. If anything, I have more respect for them for just kind of accepting the truth that they just didn't want to tell the stories badly enough. Which brings me nicely to Letitia's final piece of wisdom. And also, don't compare yourself to anyone. Don't do that. Don't look at someone else and be like, man, look at where, where they are, I'm not there. No. Have faith. You know, I'll admit I've had some very very low moments in my pursuit of a successful acting career and I also admit that it's the life that I chose. I've seen many of my contemporaries go on to have starring roles in mainstream television or even on the big screen and I've been very blessed to have been able to see their journey from you know, just a jobbing actor to, to somebody who's in demand. You know, some of them have starred in the sorts of films I'd always dreamed of being in, and I've been immensely honored and humbled, actually, that they've picked up the phone and asked for my opinion on the things, or even just my knowledge on the franchises that they're involved in. But, you know, equally, I, sometimes I've just thought, Man, I wish that was me. But you know, then I've checked in with myself and I've just reminded myself that yes, you know, I wanted to play in these sandboxes. Yes, those are the projects that I've always dreamed of being involved in that, that have now been made. But then I have to remind myself that I've still got time on my side. You know, at the time I'm recording this, I'm in my late 20s and if you look at the kind of career trajectories of any mainstream male actor, unfortunately, you know, the industry doesn't seem to understand the evergreen nature of the fact that a female can be talented after she's left her 20s, which I just think is batshit insane, but anyway, for a male actor, 
if you look, if you just look at their trajectory, and you see where they kind of hit mainstream, it usually happens in their late 30s, mid 40s even, maybe even late 40s. So if you really think about it, that means I've got 20 plus years before I'm in prime time, 20 plus years before I really have to start asking the question, of what does my future hold. So between now and then, I just have to graft, build my skills as a performer, build my portfolio, and understand that I've got time on my side and that I should not be looking at other people and their careers to judge my own self-worth, but actually just keep looking straight ahead. If I can quote Gandalf for a minute, <laughs> Odd, I know. All that I have to decide is what to do with the time that's given to me. And I've decided that I want to tell people's stories and to encourage other people that if they want to do the same, they should just go for it. Mm -hmm.